right guys here today's top stories in our what in the world segment number one i believe we all know mohammed abduba dida He contested for president of Kenya twice, with 2013 being the most memorable of them, where he went up against Raila in Uru Kenyatta. Well now, Dida has been arrested in the United States of America and is set to serve a seven-year sentence. Now to find out what Dida did to deserve such a hefty punishment, we would have to look into his trial. And luckily, I did just that this morning. And so as far as I can tell, during trial, Dida was facing two charges, stalking and transmitting threats, and the second charge aggravated stalking and violation of a restraining order against the victim. Now for that, he's been sentenced to two years in prison for the first offense and seven years in prison for the second offense. Now, luckily the judge didn't do seven plus two, he just gave him seven. Now in regards to who the victim is, I have found little to no evidence that mentions the victim. Perhaps the courts decided to mask the name so that they can enjoy some privacy even as a... Uh, Dida is being convicted. But what I can bet is that the victim is a woman, cause no man would constantly be violating restraining orders to see another man. So probably an estranged wife or something of that sort. And on that note, I always say men need to be very, very careful, especially the men that we have working in America. America is a woman's country. Not that we're against women or anything, but the laws are very nice towards women. But for men, it is very easy to suffer. I've seen stories. There's one in specific that I saw. There's a gentleman who allowed a woman to stay in his house. No marriage, no nothing. But one day the woman called the police on him, said that he's beaten her up or something of that sort and he was kicked out of the house along with his dog and the woman was allowed to continue occupying the house. Now, America is not Kenya. Much as Kenya we are corrupt, we have some ethics. There are things that our Kenyan ladies here might not do to the men but out there it is very very different and Dida is very likely a victim. I believe that restraining order that he violated is not against another man. For sure for sure it must be a lady. Now we'll be looking to see if the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is interested in intervening in that case but at this point what are they intervening? A judge has already rubber stamped and uh, said seven years and America is not Uganda or Tanzania our neighbors where we can just make a call and uh, things happen. So I think 2029 is when Dida will be out. Maybe he'll be out in time to vie in 2032. You never know. Time will be the truth teller. Now, the second story of the day, the acting police inspector general, Masengeli, is to be sentenced on Friday for failing to honor three consecutive court summons about abductions and missing persons during Mandamano. Now, this is nothing new in politics. Police bosses since time in memorial have been violating court orders like it's nothing. I remember at one point Uru took Jimmy Wanjigi's guns and Wanjigi won the case in court, but the police refused to return the guns to Wanjigi despite Wanjigi prevailing in court. So a judge had to issue a court order that Police Inspector General Hilary Mutiambai be arrested. Now that's <laughs> kind of ironic because that judge ought to know better. No police can arrest their boss in this country even if a thousand court orders are given. In fact, after giving that order, the same judge, the same same one who gave the arrest warrant, within 24 hours or so, he was saying that his life is in danger and he needs police protection because there was a rebellion from police against the judge. And that kind of sets the precedent of future police bosses refusing to go to court. So our acting IG is likely going to continue with a bad precedent of his predecessors of ignoring court orders and summons. It's sad, but that's not new. I believe at this point, the only person who can change that is the president himself by intervening. Otherwise, this is just status quo as far as I can see it. Now, the third story of the day, I've always said that politics is a very dirty game and it serves one's interest to enter politics while very young and exit still while young. Those who die in power, have a very low chance of seeing heaven because you get to lie, kill, and steal pretty much every other day. It's just a nasty business, day in, day out. Now, why do I say this? As we speak, one of Tanzania's opposition leaders, Mohamed Ali Kibao of Chadema Party, has been kidnapped, beaten, and doused with acid all over his face. Now, how on earth did they nab him? Well, while he was traveling from Dar es Salaam to his hometown of Tanga, he was forced off a bus by Suluhu's goons. And that was the last that anyone ever saw of him. In fact, there's pictures and videos people took as he was being removed from the bus. So this guy was murdered in daylight. And that's why I always allude that politics enter while you're young, live while you're young, follow the Uru Kenyatta doctrine. 
What Raila Odinga is doing is dangerous. He wants to play politics to the very end. But Uru Kenyatta is smart. He entered when he was a young guy as president. He served his two terms. He has left politics. Now he has retired. There is life after this, Buana. Let's not uh, continue down a career that taints the soul. It's a very, very dangerous affair in the afterlife. But that's just my opinion, guys. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. Uh, if there's any topic you'd like for me to cover in tomorrow's Out in the World segment, just uh, hit me up and I'll make sure to cover it tomorrow. And with that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula. Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.